My conversation with James Karundu begins right now and like I said, he is a motivational speaker, an author and also a business mentor. Our topic is what does it really take for one to start up a business? James, welcome to Business Foresight. Thank you, Ronald. You're welcome. So now, tell us, mm -hmm. many want to venture into business, many want to be successful, but they really don't know what it takes for, what it takes for them to come up with that business. Mm -hmm. What does it really take to have it going? Excellent question. Now, everything begins with a need. Yes. A business exists to meet a need. So it goes without saying, if there's no need, then no business. That's where everything begins. It means there's a gap. It means there's something people need that they're not getting. There's a force pushing you. There's a force pushing you. Yes. But the force pushing you, now you, the person starting the business, is a force that comes from within. Because for you to really start a business, just to emphasize the really, really part of the it, really part of it yes. Is, yes. is that it must come from a, a passion that comes from within. You see, there's a connection between you, your passion and that need that exists in the market. Because if you lose the connection, then you will be like the many people who start and they do not succeed. Yes. So everything begins with you. That there's something you're passionate about, there's something you're talented at, something that you're good at, or there's an issue that touches your heart. And there is a need that exists. So you become the person who creates a solution to meet that need. So now, mm -hmm. here we have the need, mm -hmm. I have the passion that drives me, mm -hmm. now I'm into this business. Mm -hmm. What do I need to see this business come mm -hmm. to the, that particular level that now I say mm -hmm. I have made it? Mm -hmm. Well, okay, it's not exactly that straightforward. Yes. And that is why a lot of people, uh, it, just, it does take time uh, for the idea to mature, mm -hmm and for one to make that connection with the market. Okay. But everything begins with a passion, everything begins with a desire, and everything begins with a decision that I'm going to start this. Yes. Yes. So there's research that one needs to do yes. so that uh, you know exactly what the problem is. Uh, you may try out uh, your idea, you may try out a few, a few solutions here and there. Uh, so, uh, the, so the early part is the early part of uh, a bit of trial and error, mm -hmm. and, and testing out, find out what is the real need? Uh, and then you having the courage to sink in money. Either money from your savings, money that you borrowed, or money that you go and uh, bring people together. You know, you fundraise, however you do it. Uh, one cannot start a business without money. Mm -hmm. Yes. Now, um, earlier on, I, I spoke to a lady, mm -hmm. um, Lucy Mwangi, yes. uh, of Palmy Enterprise. Mm -hmm. And she was telling me her journey when she came up with Palmy Enterprise. Mm -hmm. You know, um, one thing she said is she started as a sole proprietor. Yes. And now moving to the next level was a bit of a challenge mm -hmm. because she needed uh, to know a few things here and there. When you're coming up with a company, mm -hmm. or um, yes, when you're com coming up with a company mm -hmm. like Palmy, mm -hmm. What are the requirements that mm -hmm. you need to put in place mm -hmm. so that you know you can come up with that particular company mm -hmm. that you're looking at? Well, most people begin as sole, sole proprietors, sole yes. traders, and yes. the majority of small businesses, that's how even today they're still constituted. There are limitations to st starting and staying as a sole trader. That is what brings the need to bring other people on board or to create it to be a limited company. Yes. Um, however, the transition, this is what now gets the transition to happen. Mm -hmm. Number one, you've tried out your idea, you've seen this potential, you've seen there is clientele that is coming in, and now there's the need to scale things up. That is what brings about the need now to constitute the company differently. Mm -hmm. You want to, you, possibly you need more money, typically that is the reason. You need more money, so you may need to bring in more people. Or if you want to go and borrow money, they might not give you money if you're a sole trader. Mm -hmm. so, so those are some of the, the, the things. It's usually to do with the growth. You've tried out the idea, this thing can work, it's been proven, now we need to take it to the next level. Mm -hmm. Now, what are the considerations in terms of uh, who you need to bring on board? Yes. Um, in the past, it was, it was a bit difficult to start a company. Nowadays, the laws have changed. 
So you ideally you need to bring in one or two other people. But the key thing to, to remember is that you must be the so you must you must have a majority of the ownership of the company. Because if you don't have a majority of the ownership in terms of shares, then you cannot make decisions. So and a lot of people have brought in people and given them shares left, right and center. I would urge caution. Uh, be very careful about whom you give a piece of your company. Because a share means that person owns a piece of even if they don't do anything about it. Mm -hmm. So be very careful. You want to have few trusted people. And it's not always the family members. Sometimes most people want to bring in family members, which I'm not so sure whether that's the right thing. Yes. Bring them in if there's value they're adding. Yes. Speaking of a, of a few value peop, value, valued people, mm -hmm. what uh, process mm -hmm. do you use to vet someone mm -hmm. so that you say um, this particular person mm -hmm fits mm -hmm. and this particular person mm -hmm. can actually add value, add value. so to i need to have them on board yes okay so a number of a number of elements here you see what we're talking about in terms of bringing people on board is either as partners or part of a board of directors mm -hmm. that's really the way to look at it mm -hmm. that's actually really the official way mm -hmm. so they can come in as partners or they can come in as board of directors so what i'm interested in is more the board of directors thing mm -hmm. Because you see, as you start growing your company, a lot of things come into place. Yes. And you do not have the expertise for all the various elements. Element. That is why you need to bring on board, on your board of directors, people who have different skill sets. There could be somebody who is very good with the management element. Mm -hmm. Because essentially now, when you are when talking about that, then you're becoming like the CEO who reports to a board of directors. Yes. Now, so you're looking at expertise, mm -hmm. but also you're looking at some people who could be having the money, which you don't have. So you bring them on board, and their contribution is the money. But typically, you're looking at expertise, and also people with networks, because you need to access markets. You're looking with people with connections. That's, those are the other things you're looking at. How do you choose the right people mm -hmm. to bring on board mm -hmm. as the BODs, mm -hmm. and what are the categories, pointers that one has to take into consideration? Excellent. Now, first of all, you want the criteria number one yes. is integrity. Mm -hmm. You need to have people of integrity. integrity. So, by any chance, any person you're thinking about has been involved in a scandal somewhere, yes. or they've been taken to court because of not paying, or this or that, yeah. or they, ah. they are not in, of good reputation, mm -hmm. then stay away. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. The other one is this Does this person have proven expertise because you see you want people who have walked that journey somebody who has not walked that entrepreneurial journey yes. may not add too much value mm -hmm. so the other thing that you want to look at here is is this somebody who is available because if the person is too busy how are they going to help you mm -hmm. is this somebody who is approachable you may see a person you want but they're not approachable so yeah, that person sure. cannot be there. Yes. Yes. Now, I'm, I'm venturing into this business. Yes. Um, I have some small money mm -hmm. with me that maybe can help me start this money, mm -hmm. this business. Mm -hmm. Would you advise anyone who's going into business mm -hmm. to go for a loan? Mm -hmm. This is, um, let's call it a startup. Mm -hmm. Would you advise someone who's going into this business to look for a loan from the bank, mm -hmm. of which even acquiring a loan from the bank for mm -hmm. a startup mm -hmm. gets a bit hectic in this mm -hmm. country? Mm -hmm. Yes. This is an interesting question because it's also part of my own journey yes. and I struggled with that. And uh, from my own experience, um, and this is also what I advise my clients, mm -hmm. I always say think big, start small, start where you are with what you have. Mm -hmm. So for a startup, don't worry too much about uh, the loan and all that. I would say start in whichever small way you can, with a small saving you can. Uh, family members who trust you, friends who can entrust you, tr start in that small way. Try out your idea. So when your idea starts farming up, when your idea starts uh, looking like it can succeed, you see that's when you start formalizing the idea. That's when you start registering. Mm -hmm. That's when you start opening bank accounts. At that point, you can go and get a loan. Mm -hmm. I have uh, run my own business by borrowing. But it's because I had already something established. So I had the cash flow to pay the loans. Mm -hmm. So 
I would avoid the loans as much as possible. Yes. And uh, in any case, um, why not try other alternative ways of raising the funds before you go to the loan? Take the loan when you're a bit more established, when you're at the growth and expansion stage, not at the startup. As you wind up, mm -hmm. these other ways of seeking financial support, mm -hmm. would this be the equities? No, I wouldn't go equity routes. That again, it's a bit too high up, too complicated. Yes. I'm looking, I'm, I'm, you see, if you're passionate about an idea yes. and you believe in it, mm -hmm. you will go the extra mile. Let's talk about some of the extra miles. That here I am, I have seen this opportunity. Uh -huh. uh, I believe I can do this, but I need to raise the money. So there are a number of things you can do. One of them is to work, you know, get a job, part-time work. Uh, do something on Saturdays, earn extra money. Mm -hmm. Even if back home there, you know, go and ask the farmer, go and chimba, get paid, start raising the money. You know, I'm trying to say here, let's not close our eyes and say that uh, going to the bank is the only way. There's so many ways of raising money. Sometimes you may have to put your dream on hold a little bit so that you save, so that you, you can even start another side business mm -hmm or you try and do another deal to bring in the money. Yes. But all that is about creativity. If you have a good idea and you know this thing can work and it is close to your heart, you will look for the money. Be creative. You see, a lot of people look at resources. Yet, it is not lack of resources that is holding them back. It is this thing of not being resourceful. Thank you very much, James Karundu, for your time. I really do appreciate I'm glad to be here. That's all on Business Foresight this week. And as James Karundu puts it, before you resolve on looking for a loan or you resolve on seeking for loans from banks or equities, get a side hustle, raise the money, venture into your business. This has been the Business Foresight. I have been your host, Ronaldo Diambo. Until next time, do enjoy the rest of your viewing.